Hello, this is Dancer A. I am here today for a tutorial series that I announced maybe a week ago uh, on the tactile editor that was released about like a month and a half ago. So I'm um, just going to be covering, this video is going to be covering the, uh, the bare basics of the editor itself and following videos will be going into more advanced things like such as events, uh, animations, skills, hard coding things, um, stuff like that. I'll, I'll, it'll, it'll make more sense once those videos come out. But um, so here we're going to be starting from scratch. So hopefully you know to create a new project. Uh, this also this tutorial is assuming that you've already installed the editor. I'm not going to be t explaining how to install the editor outside of. The instructions that already exist. It seems it's kind of self-explanatory in my opinion and I don't feel like uninstalling it on one of my two computers to reinstall it. That's about it. Anyway, so we're gonna start a new project. Uh, we'll just call it, I don't know, the wind cometh. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we'll put it here. I don't really care if you see my my name. It's not really my name anyway, so <laughs> I don't care. Um, yeah, and the project folder will be the wind cometh. Sure. Let's put it somewhere else. Let's put it in... Uh... uh Yep, and our content source. So for our content source, you want to grab the effectsnet content. You could use the blank project, but there's no point to it. I personally have used it. You can build a project with it, it just takes a lot of time and you have to import basically everything that's already in the effects the project. So what's the point? So yeah, it's gonna prompt you to create a new shared library. So you need to create one of those. Give it some time to uh, build the whole project. Maybe have something to eat. Scoop ice cream. Walk your dog. I don't know. Oops. Alright, so you'll get a little pop-up like this. New project has been created. And uh, hit that build code button. Now, you're going to want to have Visual Studio installed. Um, it's just a given it's how it builds the project. Do not have Visual Studio installed. You, that a quick Google search should give you a free version of Visual Studio. I don't believe you need a paid version. I've used the Express version before, back in the older versions of uh, Tactile, back when it was Fexna. So it does work. I'm gonna grab your, uh, select the right version, and it has been built. You'll get a little pop-up like this. So you can start up the editor. Bada boom, you have the whole editor. It looks suspiciously like FE7X, doesn't it? Well, that's because it has FE7X's base data for the most part in it. So, you know, you have you have your actors, you got Uther, you got Madeline, Sybil, etc. You got your classes. I'm going to go into detail on this in a couple seconds, just, just kind of running through everything you see here, all the tabs. Alright, so the first thing you want to do at this point is let's just make sure it works. Let's just make sure it runs. So we're not gonna do anything. We're gonna go right here to the Battlers tab. We're gonna process all of these outdated sprites. Shouldn't take too long. Cool. Processed. Yes, you wanna overwrite the data. You wanna open up every single tab and you wanna save. Just in case, this is not necessary unless you are using the unedited, the um, blank project then you will be prompted to do this. Everything else should be fine. Yes, okay. And we shouldn't need to run anything else. I'm gonna compile everything. Ah, right. Open the text editor and save that. Ba-bang. And that should be it. Run the compiler. It's gonna take a little bit because you're compiling every single thing for the first time. Alright, and you'll get a screen like this. Everything's been compiled successfully. 
So that's good. That's good news. So we can start the unit editor. We can do it without compiling this thing because we just compiled it. And let's just open up trial map one. See everything's working. It looks good. We got Uther here. He got his trusty Claymore. He got his uh he's the absent prince of Ostia. You know, we got our uh, our stuff, we got his guts. You know, in case he gets burned. He'll raise his attack by one stage. Everything looks good. Just by default. So let's run a playtest. Now it's gonna tell you about this debug playtest thing. We'll talk about that when we get into events, but this used to not be um, a requirement. That's why this event doesn't have it. But anyway, so as you can see, we're playing. Everything looks good. This is trial map one. See? Looks normal. Everything's good. So as you can see, this is very loud. <laughs> At least for me it is. I don't know if it's loud for anybody else. Uh, anyway, I don't even need music for that. But, everything's good to go. Now there's just something I might as well show you since we're in the unit editor anyway. There's a little debug menu. Let's do some fun stuff. Now, access the debug menu by hitting the tilde on your keyboard. Let's say let's one we wanna have Mag. Mag has a page. I don't I don't want him to be a page. Let's just test him out to see if he was a mage. I mean he was a shaman. Hell. He's a druid. Why not? Hmm, he can't reach that fighter though. So let's just give infinite move for testing purposes. This is all for testing purposes. Obviously don't do this if you're like trying to actually play the chapter out. But it works for, like I said, testing purposes. Nifty, isn't it? A lot of things you can do with the, uh, like, yeah, you can refresh units, you can delete units. Up, oh, Magnet died. Whoops. Unfortunate. We can skip the whole chapter, we can heal someone who's taken damage. Let's have her heart and just get hurt. Look at this boy. Oh, he doesn't want to get hurt. Interesting. Maybe those stats are just too high. What if we, by holding the C button, lowered it? Yes, you can do that. You can lower and increase things. You hold down the uh, C and the arrow keys left and right, and you can kind of modify stats to for more testing purposes. That's the whole point of this. This works on any stat, by the way, not just like your standard stats. Oh, he's healed, he's good. And now he's back to normal. Let's turn off that uh, infinite movement thing so I can show you that yes, it does work with movement. But it only goes to the cap of whatever that class is. So you can't go over caps. Force a con in both directions. Doesn't work with Traveler though. Or rating, because those are those are added up. Works with HP. Works with level. Works with the XP. Even works with items. You can test out pretty much anything. That's sort of the point of this. Oh, I've kinda hit the debug monitor a bit. It's a nifty little uh, thing you can do with with testing. Anything else relevant here? Ah, I can turn the fog on, because I want to. By default, you have three lines of space. I mean, three lines of sight. You can raise support levels, and you can turn the AI off, in case you just don't want the AI to do anything. So in this case, AI will do nothing. You can see also here, in your um, debug monitor form, AI is disabled. So the AI will not ever do anything. In case you forget, now the AI is back on, so it doesn't show that anymore. So it'll actually show everything's AI. Alright. 
that's enough. Let's skip the chapter. Yeah, look at that. I got. I did great, even though Magnus died. Anyway. And then once you skip the end of the chapter, you're back at the unit editor. Cool? Simple? Awesome. Alright. Now let's go and check out these tabs. A little more in depth now. Obviously these things seem kind of self-explanatory. You got your items here. If you want it to be an item and not a weapon, hit in this little checkbox, you'll get the item, the item list. Your supports are listed here. You can auto add whatever is already listed. So let's say I just, I freak, I don't, let's say I add a support in the support tab. Here are all the supports by default. I'll cover all removing all this in the, in the next video. And you have your generics in here. And let's say you add a support, you can just auto add. You don't have to remember all these, all these parameters. Not parameters. What's the word I want? Uh, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean. You can add a skill if you want for them to just have built in. Let's say I want. Yeah. You know what? Uther, you have soul now. <laughs> and also, you. Well, actually, no. You can't give weapon levels that aren't. They don't mean anything. Because this class can't use lances, so it doesn't matter. Um. Yeah. Alright. Same thing with, uh classes, you know, you have your basic stats. I'm going to go into the classes a little bit more deep depth in the next video, because there's a little bit more that meets the eye for these. Not sig not super, but it basically has to do with your generics, your weak, mid, normal, and strong. Uh, your skills. I'm. This is going to be a whole dedicated video. Your identifier, which is not relevant. Don't bother. Don't touch this. Your description. Name. The icon. Status effects. Some status effects are tied to skills, or have skills tied to them. No, don't save that. I didn't do anything. You have your weapon types, your weapons, your items, terrain, you know, rain. This is the terrain effects. Snow, this is the terrain effects. Clear weather, this is the terrain effects. Firing through has to do with, like, uh, can you shoot an arrow or can you fire um, magic through it? So, by default, walls you cannot fire through, panels you can. Here are your tile sets that are in by default. And the terrain for them, let's say you want, I don't know, this is not a mountain. I want it to be a thicket. So you can actually just right click on whatever you have. Right clicking will just give you whatever tag is on the tile you right clicked. So now the mountain is a thicket. There's no reason to do this. Just this is relevant for me adding new tile sets. You have your chapters by default. We're gonna be covering this on its own. You got your face sprites by default. When it comes to actually using these, um, the non Game Boy Advance face sprites, as far as I know, are not technically free to use. They're just here because of the trial map purposes. Your uh, battlers. Which are all your animations that are in by default. Battle recoloring has to do with, you know, let's say you want Eagler to have. Uh, that's an ugly color. Pure red. I don't know. He's Now he's Kent. That's how you'd switch it. I'm not gonna save that. This is Anime Association. We're gonna cover that by itself. And your configs, there's not many of them currently in. I think it only goes up to the. Yeah. Only the battle game music, but they're not super complicated. This is just like your caps. You want to change the cap of HP. Let's say you want it to be 999. I don't know why, but it caps out at 255. Why it caps at 255? I couldn't tell you, because this is not like Game Boy Advance. It's not like we're we have no. Is it that? Might, maybe it is because they're two-bit integers. I don't know. It could have something to do with that. Um, you can change the stat cap to 50. Doesn't really make a difference. This HP value thing has to do with your... Um, oh, what's it called? Yeah, compared to other stats. So, as you can see in like these growths, your HP is 50% and your growth total is 175. And your HP is 25. But the base stat total is saying 47.5. You're like, where's the half coming from? It's from HP. HP's counted as a half. If I went to the config, 
and I made HP count as one. Uh, I didn't save it. <laughs> yep. Now, see, it counts as the full number. 62, 297 and a half. Wait, no, this is someone else. Who had 25 HP? Oh, it actually didn't update in here, but it is counting that. That's what it's referring to. It's not really relevant, it's only a display thing. Your luck cap, which is different from the regular stat cap. Low health percentage has to do with AI. Uh, your level caps, you can change these as willy-nilly. Uh, resetting to level 1 on promotion has to do with, like, let's see you're playing, you're doing a, a game that's in the style like FE4, or Three Houses, where you promote but you don't actually change levels, you wouldn't have this checked. So promotion menu, pretty much you're always going to use this by default, otherwise I don't think you want random promotions, That's doesn't seem fun. I guess maybe you're doing straight up FE2, where you just go to Mila and you go boom, random promotion for you. <laughs> I hated that, but it's not, it's not important. Um, enemy exception on kill, so this has to do with, these are all ex experience points, so... <sighs> These, this is not anything... You're not really going to ever touch any of these configs. You might affect this inventory size. You might affect your S rank things, but for the most part, you're not touching most of these. Uh, yes? Yeah, because I switched that back. You're not pretty much ever touching any of this. This is straight graphical. And this you might change, because you know, you'll change your music around. So let's say you don't want the FV7 main theme should be previewing. Why isn't that previewing? Hit preview. I don't know what I did. Maybe I have it muted. I don't realize it. I do. I have it muted. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it, it shows you, it's showing you what exactly is going to play for all these. I know you're, you're probably saying like, well, where's the attack theme? Where's the map theme? Those are actually in chapters. And under Right here. It's right in front of me. Your turn theme and your battle themes. So that's going to cover for the first video. Um, hope that was informative. Leave a comment or whatever if you have any questions. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.